So folks, I hope you're having a beautiful, wonderful weekend because one man isn't and we're talking about Donald Trump. So hit the like and subscribe button so we can follow the two big ways that his weekend has been ruined. You know this man, he probably wanted to get out on the golf course, play some golf, whatever, figure out ways to ruin the country. But for both the personal and and political realms, his legal issues just got much worse. We have some breaking analysis and some breaking info from within the DOJ about how not only do they have evidence against Trump, and it's basically like shooting fish in a barrel, you know what I mean? Like, the evidence in this case, uh, you know, is, 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 is rock solid, but also that, you know, we've often had this discussion that, you know, there almost seems to be a reluctance to charge Trump. Like, you know, th this narrative from Trump and his supporters that he's the most persecuted man in modern history, when it's the exact opposite. Like, he gets away with everything, because even before he was in politics, he was, like, rich and famous and all of that. And now he's a former president. So, what they're saying is, even if there's a lack of a desire to charge Trump, even if there is a sense from within the DOJ that they don't want to, that the case against Trump is so bad that they don't have a choice. Like, it's almost like if the case was weaker, they could ignore it, but they can't. And we're going to explain that in the following clips. But then also, a shocking move by Melania Trump, making a shocking statement about her marriage in a very public way, or at least a way that's come out in public in the last couple days, where Melania has taken the opportunity to make some extra money off her husband after she was humiliated by him. It is a sign that whether it's in the marriage side or the document side, Trump is screwed. About this document specifically. The third issue is there's a special counsel that's appointed and news broke yesterday that there might be a tape recording that, quote, where you acknowledge that you understood yeah. that these were classified documents. Do you, first of all, do you know who this call may be with? Do you know anything no, about it? No, I don't it? know anything about it. All I know is this. Everything I did was right. We have the Presidential Records Act, which I abided by 100 percent. Biden has 1,850 boxes with a lot of classified stuff that he's not supposed to have. In his case, I have the right to declassify as president. Again, the misdirection. I mean, the call was with Mark. It's not, these aren't mysterious facts. They've been all over the news for two days. The call was with the uh, the recording was for an auto biography of, that Mark Meadows was drafting and was his ghostwriter. He's on the tape. He's not secretly recorded. He's he's wave, crinkling a piece of paper. And it, it seems that he's missing what endangers him, which is that he, in his own voice, and we just saw in the E. Jean Carroll trial, that in his own voice, copping to believing that for a million years you could grab women between the legs because that's what famous people do, and that that's still his position today. What he's copping to in all of these these taped appearances is is not a denial that he took classified information and there's never a denial that he obstructed the government's efforts to have the classified material made secure again. That's exactly right, Nicole. And that is his entire answer last night. I had to suffer through that uh, and watch <laughs> that thing. And um, yeah, you've got it exactly right. I mean, you know, I used to be national security advisor at the Justice Department. I handle these kinds of documents all the time. And I can tell you, when someone asks you, did you ever disseminate a piece of classified information? You darn well know who you talk to classified talk classified information with and who you did. It's not the kind of thing you forget and say not really or something like that. If this were any other person and they had admitted to what Donald Trump's already admitted to, they'd be in jail. This is not a hard case. And that is why ultimately I think the trajectory of this investigation, based on everything we know and how the case gets stronger and stronger with new pieces of information, makes it very hard for Jack Smith to do anything else but to indict. Because if it were anyone else, there would be an indictment already. First, this, this document. There's reporting now, well, I just said, Trump's lawyers can't find it. If they can't find it, does that mean that this case is going to crumble? No. Depending on what the evidence shows, 
prosecutors will have an opportunity to portray it appropriately as incriminating. If they find it, they found it. And it's a classified document Donald Trump should not have taken with him when he left the White House. And he should not been, have been referring to it, waving it around, talking about its contents with people who had no security clearance. They didn't get to know one word of what was in that document he was waving around. So if they have it, it's incriminating. If they don't have it, and Donald Trump was referring to it and said, it's classified, I can't show it to you, what did he do with it? <laughs> right. Did he destroy it? Is he still hiding it? Did he sell it, disseminate it to somebody? So if the story goes one way based on the evidence, it's incriminating. If the story goes the other way, it may actually be more incriminating. I mean, even talking about a classified document is a, is a, pro a problem. How significant is it that there is an audio recording of what we're talking about? It's huge, Jonathan. You know, I tried wiretap cases in the federal courthouse three blocks away, RICO cases, in fact. And when you can present to the jury the crime being committed or being discussed by the very person on trial who's sitting across the courtroom from the jury, it's evidentiary gold. And most importantly, when you can take two audio recordings or two videos, one with Donald Trump saying, I declassified everything with my mind, or it was automatically declassified when I took it with me from the White House, and you can immediately thereafter play an audio recording of him six months after leaving the presidency saying, I'd like to show this to you, but it's classified. Jurors get the point. You know, the, 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 it might feel good to Donald Trump in the moment saying these things on faux news networks or in town halls. But boy, once prosecutors can surgically present this stuff to a jury, it's going to be like shooting fish in a barrel. So then how does his legal team prepare for this? Because, you know, audio, audio recordings are tough to defend against, aren't they? Yes, in, in the normal instance, when you have this much incriminating evidence against the defendant, you know how you prepare for it? You work your tail off in plea negotiations to try to reduce your client's exposure. Will Donald Trump ever admit guilt in court and plead guilty? I would not bet a dollar on that. Oh, and one, one more thing on this before we get to Rico and, and Georgia. Um, how significant is it that in that town hall, Caitlin Collins directly asked Donald Trump, have you shown anyone any classified information? And he said basically definitively, no. Yeah, no. Well, at first he could, well, I don't think so. I don't remember. No, I don't. But I would have had the right to. So one, you're, you're, you're basically making admissions. And then two, you're making it clear that you're lying about your right to show people classified. So you can see there, right? You can see, you can definitely see, 100%. Like, this is not going well for Trump. And I think that's a great point, because I think a lot of people have been saying in a very frustrated way, like, why has this SOB gotten away with it for so long? And part of it is, well, you know, investigations take time, trials take time. But another part of it is, you know, probably the case that if you're on the fence, you 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 jump off on the don't charge a former president side of the fence. It's not right. That wouldn't be my way of doing it. But like, that's the way a lot of people think. And so in any case where they have the opportunity to look the other way, they will. But this has gotten so bad that there's no choice. Like Donald Trump didn't just merely take documents and didn't just merely not give them back and didn't even just merely lie about giving them back when he didn't give them back once. He did it so many times with so many public statements and so many leaked recordings and the nature of the documents being so serious that they have to. And I think that's so telling. Like that language, it's frustrating, isn't it? But it's very telling that it's like, man, they want to let him get away with it in some ways, but they can't. They just cannot. And I think that's the most damning thing for Trump. All of the privilege in the world, white, male, billionaire, or at least a billionaire ostensibly, maybe at one point in his life, he was a billionaire, uh, former president, all of that. And they still are like, well, we want to let him get away with it, but it's too much. And this is where the, 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 the fish in the barrel stuff, but this is where the Melania stuff comes in because she was very quiet 
during the whole Jean Carroll stuff, if you recall. She basically said nothing. Uh, not even like, like, not even like a supportive word to her husband, because it turns out behind the scenes, she took the opportunity, at least according to a couple sources, to renegotiate her prenuptials with Trump in lieu of getting more money for her and her part of the family. And that's a statement that's come out through multiple sources. Her basically saying, yeah, I guess I'll stick around in this marriage but it's going to cost you when it says here. It seems like quite a few sources are claiming that Donald Trump's wife, Melania Trump, is using the chaos to her financial advantage. Now, if you've been keeping up to date with the controversial family, then you notice how for months on end, she was keeping herself away from public eye. And then all of a sudden, she became gung-ho about being first lady again. Well, it seems now we know the alleged reason why. Multiple sources and insiders have told Radar Online, and other sources as well, uh, that Melania has threatened to renegotiate her and Donald's prenup after a court jury ordered him to pay $5 million to Jean Carroll. And if she gets a bigger allowance, she plays the doting wife again on the campaign. It seems like she was playing behind the scenes. According to these insiders, around the same time as the trial, Melania talked about boosting her monthly allowance and their son Barron's, uh, Baron Trump's inheritance. And in return, she'd help Donald with his flailing 2024 presidential campaign run. This really was a take it or leave it situation, one source said. Let's just say Melania was in no mood to negotiate with Donald and she knew full well, or he knew full well, there was no chance he was returning to the Oval Office without her. Another insider added, she used the situation well to her advantage back then, referring to the time she didn't join Donald at the White House for nearly six months and saw no reason why she shouldn't do it again. So summed up, these insiders allege Melania gets more Bordeaux, and Donald secures her loyalty during the campaign, at least for now. That's devastating for Trump, right? It shows like that's even more transactional than we thought. We always knew the marriage was transactional, and now we really know. So any way you slice it, whether it's the civil cases or the criminal cases, even Trump's wife is like, yeah, as you burn, as you crash and burn, I'm going to get at least one more paycheck out of your sorry ass.